Welcome to the fourth part in my tutorial series, in which I cover the basics of using Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit. Thus far, we have created a simple VR scene and set up an XR rig within it. We have also taken a brief look at Unity's action-based input system, and specifically, how this integrates with our XR rig. Next, we will get onto the fun stuff. We will start implementing some basic interactions. So, assuming that you have completed the previous tutorials in this series, let's get on with it. First, I'd like to point out that we will be loosely replicating the interactions found in Unity's own XRI Toolkit Examples project. This project can also be downloaded from Unity's GitHub page. There's a link in the description below. I will be showing you how to create interactions from the ground up. Regardless, you may find the XRI Examples project useful for reference and further study. OK, let's return to the Unity project and the scene that we were working on previously. You should have the sample scene open in the Unity editor. It should look roughly like this, with a few simple objects and an XR origin object which is, in effect, our XR rig. At this point, if you play your scene, you should see a couple of red pointers tracking the movements of your touch controllers. Those red pointers are a little ugly, and it would be nice to see some kind of virtual representation of the touch controllers in the scene. Let's remedy this by creating a simplified touch controller model. We are going to use Unity's built-in 3D primitives to do this. Also, we are going to create our controller as a prefab. So, as a first step, Let's create a prefabs folder in our project assets. Within this folder, create an empty prefab and name it controller model. Double click the controller model prefab to open. The hierarchy panel has switched to showing only the contents of the controller model. In the hierarchy panel, right click on the root controller model object and select 3D object and then cube. A cube will be created as the child of controller model. Rename the cube to handle. With the handle object selected, go to the inspector panel. Using the transform component, we are now going to edit the position and scale of the handle. Use the same values if you want your controller to look identical to mine. Now go back to the hierarchy panel and reselect the controller model. Right click the controller model and select 3D object and then cylinder. With the cylinder selected, return to the inspector panel. In the transform component, enter the values into the position and scale fields. To be a little more descriptive, Let's go back to the hierarchy panel and rename the cylinder object to pad. Let's make our controller look like it's made out of black plastic. Under project assets, open the materials folder. Right click inside the materials folder to bring up the context menu. Select create and then material. Name the new material controller material. Go to the materials properties in the inspector panel. Let's uncheck Receive Shadows. Select the base map colour and set the colour to black. To apply the material, simply drag it onto both parts of the controller model in the scene view. Your controller model should now look shiny and black. In the hierarchy view, click the back arrow to exit out of the controller model prefab. The hierarchy view should again be showing the scene hierarchy. Our main aim in this tutorial will be to create the ability for the user to grab objects directly with their right hand controller. Therefore, we will remove any components relating to ray interaction or rendering from the right hand. In the hierarchy view, expand the XR Origin game object until you see the right hand controller object. Select it. Now go to the inspector panel and scroll down to the XR Ray Interactor component. Click on the small three dot menu icon on the XR Ray Interactor. Select Remove Component. Now scroll down to the XR Interactor Line Visual Component. 
Remove this component also. Finally, find the line renderer component and remove it. Now, we are going to want to render our new controller model at both the tracked right and left hand controller positions. Let's get this working next. Go to the hierarchy view and select the right hand controller. Right click on it to bring up the context menu and select create empty. This will create an empty game object as a child of the right hand controller. Rename this game object model parent. Make sure that the model parent's position and rotation is zeroed out. I'll show you what this empty game object is for in just a moment. Reselect the right hand controller. Now go back to the inspector panel and scroll down to the bottom of the XR controller component. You should see a section called model with some empty slots underneath, waiting to be populated with 3D model assets. So let's go to our prefabs folder and find the controller model prefab that we made earlier. Drag it into the model prefab slot in the XR controller component. Now that the XR controller has a reference to your controller model, it will be instantiated at runtime once the scene starts up. The XR controller will then ensure that our virtual controller model tracks the position and rotation of the real touch controller. Notice that the XR controller also has a model parent slot. The model parent is quite simply the point at which the model will be attached when it is instantiated. Go to the hierarchy view and drag the model parent game object into the model parent slot of the XR controller component. So now you may be able to guess why we attach the model parent game object to our right hand controller. It basically gives us the option to fine tune the position and rotation of the controller model relative to the tracked position and rotation received from the real touch controller. We can now tweak the position and rotation of the model parent in order to get the position and rotation of the controller model and the real controller to align perfectly. Now select the left hand controller game object. Let's repeat the steps we took to instantiate the controller model on the left hand controller. Once again, let's attach an empty game object called model parent to the left hand controller. Reselect left hand controller and let's populate the relevant slots in the model section of the XR controller component. Be sure to hook up both the controller model prefab and the model parent from the left hand controller. You may want to test your scene at this point, either by hitting the play button in the editor or by deploying a standalone build to your headset. In any case, once your scene launches, you should see a couple of virtual controllers tracking the position and orientation of your real touch controllers. We are going to set up our right hand controller so that we will be able to grab interactive objects with it. The first thing that we need to do is to add a collider to our right hand controller. The collider is required in order to define a zone around the controller within which a grab action can be performed. So if a grabbable object intersects with our controller's collider while the select button is pressed on the controller, that object should then be grabbed. Let's select the right hand controller. Go to the inspector panel and click the add component button. Start typing sphere into the component search box until the sphere collider appears as an option. Select it. A sphere collider component should be added to the right hand controller just below the XR controller component. Scroll down to it. On the sphere collider, tick the is trigger checkbox. This will make the collider behave as a trigger zone. The sphere's radius is currently too large. Set it to 0.05. While we are on the subject of colliders, there is one thing that I forgot to do and that is to remove any colliders from the 3D primitives that make up our controller model prefab. In the project's assets panel, make sure you are in the prefabs folder. Open the controller model prefab by double clicking on it. Notice that the hierarchy view has changed to show the contents of the prefab. First, select the handle element on the controller. Go to the inspector panel and remove the box collider. Now that we are here, I've noticed that the handles mesh renderer has shadow casting turned on. When creating standalone VR experiences, it's generally recommended not to use real-time shadows. 
unless they are absolutely necessary. And so, let's go to the mesh render component, and in the lighting section, let's set cast shadows to off. Now, back in the scene view, select the cylindrical object called pad. Return to the inspector, and remove the capsule collider component. Finally, go to the mesh renderer and once again, turn off cast shadows. Click on the back arrow in the hierarchy view to return to the scene hierarchy. Now, let's get back to the task at hand, which was setting up our right hand controller so that it can grab objects. Reselect the right hand controller. Now, go to the inspector panel and add an XR Direct Interactor component. The XR Direct Interactor component has a number of settings. We will look into these settings in the next video. For now, it is enough to know that the Direct Interactor component gives the controller the ability to grab objects, at least those that are set up to be grabbable. You can make an object grabbable by attaching an XR Grab Interactable component. So let's create an interactable cube for our right hand controller to pick up. Go to the hierarchy view and in the empty space below the game object tree, right click to bring up the context menu. Select XR and then grab interactable. A cube called grab interactable will be created in your scene. If you look at the inspector panel, you will notice that an XR grab interactable component has been automatically attached. Let's position the Grab Interactable on top of our pink plinth. If you look at the XR Grab Interactable component in the Inspector panel, you will notice that it has a lot of settings. Again, we will take a more in-depth look at this component in the next video, but for now it should work fine with its default settings. So let's play our scene to see our grab interaction at work. Either hit the play button in the editor, or deploy a build to your headset. To grab the cube, touch it with the right hand controller and press the grip button. To drop the cube, simply release the grip button. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we will look at the direct interaction components in more depth. We will explore the main settings and features of both the Direct Interactor and Interactable. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. But for now, goodbye and happy questing.